God bless you today, for today is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to be reading Psalm chapter 26 and 27. And as always, we're going to ask God in the mighty name of Jesus to bless us with the revelation of this word and to hide it in our hearts so we can grow in the knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We need Jesus desperately. So Psalms, it is the longest book in the Bible. And it is the songs. These are songs. You hear these and you think, how is that a song? Because we have been polluted by the world into thinking that was music. What the world offers is satanic, demonic, evil music. And that's what it sounds like. Remember, Satan is the musician of the world. He makes all the music that the world makes. So, these right here are real songs. By God Almighty. Completely different. Than what the world does. As it should be. Anything of God. Will be the opposite of the world. God. And the world of flesh and the devil. Have nothing in common. Nothing. God does not need. The world of flesh and the devil. To help him. So. Do you understand? All right. These are songs. So, a psalm of David, a, a, a song of David, a psalm, a song, a petition for exhortation. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. This presents David pleading regarding his own petitions, but more than that, it also presents the son of David pleading for Israel, and also and as also for you and me. If one will read these psalms with not only David's petition in mind, but also the petition of the greater petitioner, our intercessor, the psalm will become much more understandable. In effect, our Lord is telling Jehovah to judge him rather than us. The integrity of which he speaks is his own and not ours. And that is Jesus. And do you understand? When you are saved, Jesus Christ is your high priest. He's your intercessor. He is always intercessing on our behalf. God does not look at me to see me. He looks at his son to see me because I am in Christ. Christ is in me. He is my high priest. He is, he is intercessing on my behalf. That is beyond measure, beyond words. And as the notes say, Jesus telling God the Father, judge me. Look at me. Don't look at him. Don't look at her. Look at me. And God does. That is so awesome. It's, it's, it's beyond measure. It's beyond words. Do you understand what I'm telling you? When you are saved by Jesus Christ's blood, you have Jesus Christ in heaven on his throne. Right next to the Father. And he is your high priest. He is your intercessor. And he is always intercessing on our behalf. So I said this before. I'll say it again here. Imagine this now. I want you to get this. Here's heaven. You have God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. You have Satan in front of God on his knees. Always accusing the brethren. Always accusing saved people of sin. Whenever a saved person sins, you can believe the devil will be in heaven telling God how we sin. 
He is the accuser of the brethren. So understand that. I'm saved. When I sin, Satan is up there accusing me of my sin. All right? Think of Satan as the, uh, he's the um, prosecutor. You have Jesus there. Think of him as the, the, the defense lawyer. And think of God as the judge. So there you have Satan. <clears throat> think of him as the prosecutor in the courthouse. Jesus is the defense lawyer. God says the evidence. Satan says, here's that sin that they did. There's my evidence. Jesus says, my blood washed away his sins. God says, puts down the hammer, innocent. His blood washed away his sins, her sins. It doesn't exist. So, case closed. And that's how it is. Satan accuses. Jesus' blood is, is, is more than enough to wipe away all sin. We have forgiveness because we are saved. We can repent from our sin. And Jesus, being our high priest, our intercessor, is always intercessing on our behalf. Always telling the Father... It is, they are in me, I am in them. That is so beautiful. It's so mind-blowing. I, what words can I even say? Two, examine me, O oh Lord, and prove me. Try my reins in my heart. Every child of God should urge the Holy Spirit to probe deep within their heart to prove me. To see that we are abiding in the word of God and not in man-made gospel. Amen to that. Examine yourself, as the Bible says. Examine yourself. Where is your faith truly at? How are you truly living? What do you truly believe? You can lie to somebody else, but you can't lie to God. You can lie to yourself, but you can't lie to God. So examine me, O oh Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. Examine yourself. Be honest with yourself. Where is your standing at with the Lord? And I've got good news, good news for you. <clears throat> if you're not standing good, you can. God is there for you. Hand extended. All you got to do is repent, turn around. And there it is. Three. For your loving kindness is before my eyes, <clears throat> and I have walked in your truth. Only the Lord Jesus Christ could actually say such. Only he has constantly walked in your truth. This psalm is rich with instruction for the people of God in all dispensations. But two facts full of consolation are especially prominent. One. That help is sure to be given in response to such a pleader and to such a plea. And two, the divine priest is willing and able <clears throat> to live his blameless life in whosoever will trust him. Glory to the Lamb of God for that. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in, the, in with dissemblers. The only way a believer can rise to such spiritual height is through Christ. He becomes our substitute and our identification with him gives his perfection. Hold on. Five. I had hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. Those who are opposed to the true gospel of Christ with those our Lord will not participate. There it is. That's why you cannot be part of religion and be with Jesus. Religion is man made of the devil. As it says, I have hated the congregation of evildoers. I will not sit with the wicked. Therefore, 
You cannot be of the Lord and sit there in a Catholic church. Sit there in a Muslim temple, mosque, or anywhere else. It, it cannot happen. It cannot be done. There is only Jesus, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and him crucified. No religion. There's no sitting with, partaking with evildoers. It, it's, this is not the Lord's way. Six, I will wash my hands in innocence. Uh, innocency. What? Innocency? I don't know. Innocence. Uh, so I will accomplish your altar, O Lord. The only way that we can attain the righteousness of Christ is by fully trusting in the cross and what Jesus did there, symbolized here by the altar. Bottom line is, either you believe in what Jesus has done for you at the cross or you don't. God presents the faith. You choose to accept it or to reject the faith. There it is. Seven, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell you of all your wondrous works. The believer shall ever keep these wondrous works in mind and to constantly thank the Lord for such. Then those wondrous works will become part of our lives. So that is something also that we got to touch on. The continuous thanksgiving unto the Lord for what he's done. What he has done, what he is doing, and what he will do. And even to the things he does that we don't even know he does. We are to constantly be in remembrance of what he has done for us. Constantly be in thanksgiving because he deserves it. He's worthy. And without him we have nothing. So just constantly be in remembrance of how he's blessed you. How good he is to you. And don't let the devil lie to you and tell you that the Lord hasn't blessed you. The Lord's not good to you. Don't let that liar lie to you like that. So just be in constant thanksgiving. He's, he deserves it. He's worthy. And without him, you have nothing. Eight. <clears throat> Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your honor dwells. Presently, this speaks of the Holy Spirit abiding in us personally. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. Unfortunately, David, in committing adultery with Bathsheba, and then cold-blooded murder of her husband, Uriah, and his efforts to cover these terrible sins, became the very thing which he cried against. But God forgave him. As the Lord will forgive all who sincerely repent. In one way or the other, all of us fall into the same category with David. So we don't know about David. David, God said about David, he is a man of my own heart. But David, like anyone else, he would sin too. One of his sins was committing adultery with Bathsheba. And he even had it where her husband would be killed on the battlefield, Uriah. David did that. But you know what? He repented and God forgave him. I'm telling you, God's forgiveness, if you are sincere about repenting, about, about being sorry for your sin, God will forgive you. All right, 11. No, let me go back to that. Like I said, there's only there's only two sins that you can do you can't be forgiven of. One, blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. So you have the Holy Spirit um, just speaking things about the Holy Spirit that are absolute lies from the devil. So just blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So, for example, Jesus heal someone who can't see um, but you go but they go along you go along and say that was of the devil that wasn't of God that's of the devil you're speaking blasphemies so blasphemy the Holy Spirit there's no forgiveness so um, but I have to go more in detail about that um, I'll have to make a video about that um, actually um, two um 
if you kill yourself. So, in the Bible, there's no scripture that says um, you should, uh, talking about killing yourself, per se, suicide. Um, but, it's obvious, right? That if you kill yourself, how could you kill yourself? Because you no longer had hope or faith in anything. You kill yourself because you have absolutely no hope, absolutely no faith. Therefore, how could you be forgiven for that? You're dead. It's too late. You died in sin. Because the only way you go to heaven is by having your faith in Christ and crucified. And if you have your faith in Christ and crucified, it is impossible to kill yourself. It's impossible. If your faith is correct, you would not do that. You will sin sometimes and ask for forgiveness, but you will not be in a place where you kill yourself. It's impossible. Because to, to kill yourself, you would have to be in the lowest position the human could ever be. Just completely hopeless, completely broken, completely without the Lord. You, you would have nothing to do with Jesus to be in that kind of situation. So those two ways. Other than that, God can forgive anything else. He has and he continue, will, continuously will. All right, 10, in whose hands is Mish... Okay, uh, all right, 11. But as for me, I walk in my integrity, redeeming, and be merciful unto, merciful unto me. We can walk in integrity only in Christ. We do this by constantly expressing faith in him and the cross, which then gives the Holy Spirit latitude to work within our lives. So once again, it is all about what Jesus has done. The Bible says, wake up daily, deny yourself, pick up the cross of Christ and follow him. Meaning to be in remembrance of what he has done. Forget about what you think you can do. It's about what he has done and what he is doing and will do. It's all about Jesus. As you can see, a common theme with the Bible, it's always about Jesus. Jesus, 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 and more Jesus. It's all about Jesus, period, as you can clearly see. All right, 12. My foot stands in an even place, and the congregations will I bless the Lord. As for the intercessor, his foot was planted upon the smooth, righteous pavement of the divine audience chamber, and the foot itself was as even as the pavement on which it stood, for as uh, prefigured in the meat offering, there was an evenness in his life among men and all the, their hatred. Treachery and snares failed to roughen. And Christ alone and through his cross can our foot stand in an even place. So Satan tried to get Jesus riled up, try to mess him up, try to give him sin. But it just couldn't happen. All right, 27. A Psalm of David, trust and commitment to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, and whom shall I be afraid? This portrays Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane and on his way to Calvary. As he looked through the darkness, seeing the lanterns and torches held by those men who were coming to seize him, his heart sang of the quiet confidence of an assured faith. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. This pertains to the scores who came to arrest Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane. Uh, Jesus asked them, Whom do you seek? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. And then answered, I am he. And when he has said that, the scripture says, They went backward and fell to the ground, thereby fulfilling the statement by David a thousand years earlier. That's in John chapter 18, verse 6. Now, isn't that something? That was but a small little itsy-bitsy little speck of taste of the power of Jesus Christ right there. Showing a little something to the people. So, they all came there to the garden to arrest him. And he says, I am he. 
they fell, they went backward and fell to the ground. He made them all fall. That's power. The only Jesus can do it. That's power right there. Just, just imagine that in your mind. Imagine the devil and all the enemies of Christ coming to arrest him, to kill him. And they ask him, we want Jesus of Nazareth. And he says, I am he. And as the Bible says, they went backward and fell to the ground. Imagine them. Imagine. Here's Jesus. He just said, I am he. And imagine you fall to the ground. Everybody's fell to the ground. That's power. You would think. You would think they would get up from the ground and say, my God, my God, this dude is this dude is God. This is real. I'm, I'm, I'm running away. I'm going back home. But nope, Satan kept their hearts strong and they they just went on to do what they were sent to do. Though one host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me and this will I be confident. There is torment in fear, but Jesus had no torment at all, simply because there was no fear. Remember, as God's people, we don't fear. We have a healthy fear of God, but it's not the kind of fear of the world. So we don't fear the things of the world, because what can the world do to us? My soul belongs to God. There's nothing they can do about that. All right, that's why we have peace beyond all understanding. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. The doctrine of this psalm is that the Messiah is an all-sufficient high priest for his people and that he can, by his example, be his ministry and by his spirit in us, carry us triumphantly through the sharpest trials and through death itself. See, if we have Jesus, we have it all. We can make it through anything with Jesus. All right? For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. and the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises unto the Lord. As David cried these words, little did he realize that he was saying what the Messiah would say. Verse 5 and 6 reveal the unshakable confidence of Christ in his Father and his conviction to the resurrection, and, and he consequently pledges himself to sing loud praises in the heavenly temple. These were among the joys that the Father set before him because of which he endured the cross, despising its shame. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. Verse 7 through 10 belong to the moment of his arrest and the <clears throat> abandonment of his disciples. When you say, Seek you, my face, my heart said unto you, Your face, Lord, will I seek. Christ looked to the Heavenly Father alone, for none other could help. It is the same presently with all believers. Hide not your face far from me. Put not your servant away in, my, in, in anger. You have been my help, my leave not, neither forsake me, O God, my, o God of, my, of my salvation. A petition of Christ to the Father which was fully answered. When my father and my mother forsook me, then the Lord will take me up. In fact, the crucifixion all forsook Christ, all except the Lord. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in the plain path because of my enemies. <clears throat> that path was Calvary. It is the same path presently that which the Lord teaches. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are ri risen up against me and such as breathe out cruelty. This speaks of the trial of Christ when the religious leaders of Israel sentenced him to die. I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He believed that, though crucified, yet would he be raised from the dead, and on the way to Pilate's judgment hall, 
he addressed the words of the next verse to his own heart. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. The word courage means be encouraged. What a statement to make when on the way to Calvary. Due to the agony of the garden of Satan's efforts to kill him, he was strengthened in his heart by waiting on the Lord. What a lesson for us. And what a lesson indeed. So, um, hold on. So as this psalm has clearly shown us, that if we do things God's way, it will be this wonderful. If we have our faith in Jesus Christ and Him crucified, if we trust in the Lord, if we give thanksgiving to the Lord, constantly being a remembrance of what He's done for us, what He is doing, what He will do, what He has done, if we just do it His way, this is how our life can be. Peace, joy, just righteousness, holiness, sanctification, justification. Just a marvelous life in the Lord. If we do things his way, a life without fear, no stress. We can have it, but we got to do it his way. All right, so God bless you. Um, any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And God bless you.